Welcome everyone. Today we are going to be looking at how to light your self-tape auditions, bringing them to the very next level. By the end of this, you should know how to make your self-tape audition look like this, and or this, or anywhere between. Let's get started. All right, everyone, so today's video was requested by a good friend and actor, Jermaine Boswell. But he basically just uh, brought up this idea to me, hey, you know, a lot of actors are having to do because of COVID, all these self-tape auditions more and more, so it might be helpful to make a video for actors to be able to learn how to light their scenes. So we've got two different lighting setups today to go over, and I've structured it in such a way where you can pretty much use uh, one light, two light, three light, four lights. So by step one, the footage is still usable, it still looks good, but by the last step, you're gonna have a really overall pleasant image. But if you only have one or two lights, I made it in such a way that you could get by with that. So let's dive right in. Lighting setup number one is our documentary talking head style setup. It's technically a three point lighting setup with a little extra lighting in the background to, to make your background pop. So step one is your camera placement and your character placement. So typically I'd like to have a good 15 to 20 feet behind my actor to where my backdrop is. But we actually did that yesterday with a really big room, but I only had access it for one night, so we have to redo this whole segment. I thought it might be helpful because I'm doing this all in my living room, so everyone has access to a 14 by 14 foot room. We just used a blank wall because I know most of you or some of you might not, not have access to like a backdrop, which is fine. So I'm just gonna use a wall for this. But for my camera placement, I want to, number one, use the equivalent of, if I can, between 50 to 70 millimeters. That will reduce distortion on your face, make your face look really natural. And so your nose isn't sticking out like super far. Your face is really weird looking. So as far as placement in frame, we want our actor to be placed to where you can see just below the chest line and maybe a little above the head and less otherwise specified in your self-tape audition rules. So we have that set up here. I don't have a lot of space in the background, but right now that's okay. I'll show you the examples of the other trial that we did with this and show you the difference between the depth and how that helped us. What that'll do is one, it'll create depth. So you'll have that pushback. So a lot of this key light and the other lights in the uh, area will not affect and spill onto that wall. As you can see in the camera, this is what it looks like with no lights. I have no lights on outside of the lights that I'm actually using for the scene. When we put our key light in, I want you to notate a couple of things. We want our key light to be the brightest light in the scene because it's gonna fall on the actor's face and we want him to be the brightest point in the scene, typically. So I went ahead and put two LED panels behind this giant $2 shower liner. And what that does is actually, now that we have the liner in front of the lights, the light source is no longer the lights, but the, the liner itself. And what that does is it makes the light source a lot larger. So the closer your light and the bigger the light source, the softer the light on the actor's face. And what you'll notice here is these shadows are not very dark. They're very subtle, they're very soft, and they just kind of flatter the face. The placement of our key light is important too, because if you go too far to the side, you're gonna have half and half light and dark. So we wanna move it in such a way to where you have just like two thirds of the face lit up. You have a little bit of shadow around the nose, and then maybe two to three inches of shadow on this side of the face. Now I have the light as close as I possibly can get it to him without it being in frame. Again, the closer the light source, the softer. And if you can, try to get as much space between your, your lights behind the diffusion so that it fills up the, as much of the diffusion as possible and that just makes the light source bigger. So that's what it looks like with just our key light. It looks really neat, really soft, really flattering. You could use this if you only have one light source, one really bright light source, that's all you'd have to do. But we're not stopping there. I wanna give you as much information as possible. So the second light we're gonna add is this edge light. So what I did for this edge light is I flew it up on an arm on a C-stand. If you don't have a C-stand, that's fine. Figure out a way to rig, maybe a ladder or a couple of uh, broom poles maybe or something like that. Just figure out how to get it above your subject and behind them. So you want it to be not from the side because that's, that's technically gonna be a fill light. You want it to be above and you want it to be behind. Roughly around this area, you can mess with it and kind of see what you like, but this is where I, I ended up putting it. I have it diffused and I also have it at a warmer color temperature than my key light to give a little bit of color contrast. 
and I don't have it that bright, so it's just a little bit, making sure I'm not overexposing anything in the hair there. You cannot see it in frame. It is outside of frame, just enough, but it falls on the hair and the shoulder, and that's gonna further separate you from the background. Now, the third light that we have is our glow light. That's what I called it, because I honestly don't know what it's called. But what I did was I took this bluish hue and turn it on there. Let's see what that looks like in camera. Now we have this surrounding shroud of blue light directly behind our actor. I used some tin foil to basically shape that light to where it would just be like the single kind of pillar of light behind him. That way it's not filling up everything, which gives me a little bit of more contrast in the background. So that's our third light, and that further separates our subject, but also almost illuminates his presence. It's giving this, this powerful focus in frame. The next light I did, which when we tried this in a bigger room, I actually used a mirror and some little pieces of uh, black stuff, like you could use tape or anything that you get access to. This is for furniture, the little pads. And I just broke it up and bounced it off to, to give this oval shape on the left side of frame and I used a clamp light. You can do that if you have enough room, but I was having trouble with this tree here being able to fit it. So all I did was do the same thing, but just put this LED panel up. And what that did was give me a little bit of color contrast between the blue and the orange, and it just makes it more interesting so you're not just looking at a plain gray or white wall. So let's move on to lighting setup number two, which is our overhead lighting. This lighting setup will be more flattering on your face because you can actually get your light source closer. So it'll be softer shadows. And number two, it's gonna keep the light, the key light from spilling on that back wall. So with setup number two, I'm gonna leave all my stage lighting uh, in the same spot. The only thing I'm gonna change is my key light and my edge light. What we did was we found a way to rig this shower curtain thing up above our actor and then we placed the light on a c-stand up above that and faced it down into the diffusion sheet to give this really soft close flattering light above him i put a little bit of space between the light and the diffusion source that way it would make it even softer and allow for the full diffusion to be utilized and we moved our edge to directly behind our actor because um, we're gonna be backlighting him. And what you could do in post, if you're comfortable enough, you could actually add a vignette and target the background color and desaturate it and bring it really low so it's not very bright and then add like a, a mask around him. And in post, it'll look something like this. And as you can see with that, it looks really cool. It's almost like there's an infinite black space behind him. But we're gonna keep moving on and adding a little more detail one by one. So the next thing I'm gonna turn on is our edge light. So you can't see the light, but you can see how it's affecting his hair. And that's pretty much all we changed. So what I'm gonna do, keeping this set up, is I'm gonna add the lights back in our scene for the stage. Okay, so now we have our blue shroud light behind him. And I'm gonna turn this one on and we are looking pretty good. So that concludes our second setup, which is my personal favorite. Um, another thing you can do is try experimenting with maybe the color temperature of the edge here. You can make it a little warmer, a little cooler, whatever, whatever you wanna do. You can experiment with the color temperature and the hues of the background lights. But this is a good starting point. This gives you enough information where you can take it and run with it if you're an actor and you just wanna understand lighting a little bit more and have a couple tricks up your sleeve to make your self-tape audition stand out from the rest of them. Leave a comment down below what you guys wanna see next because I'm interested in, in what you guys think would benefit anyone, whether you're an actor or a cinematographer. Comment down below what you wanna see and we'll make it happen. What should we do for an outro? Something. Something. It was last time it was the bye. But I really don't want it to stick as the bye. Bah. Bah. Don't subscribe. Never subscribe. You're in a No. 
I can't. You can. It's impossible. Do it. Give me the rawr. Wow.